Make sure you text me when you get home. You shouldn't walk down that street alone. Always remember the cab driver's name. Ah, come on. We're just playing a game. Look, I'm not being a sleaze. Oh, that fucking cock tease. Hey, uh, I like you. I'm just, I'm just being upfront. Classic time of the month. You have an attitude problem and I think you should fix it. I wouldn't try it, man. She's so fucking frigid. Do you think she's still a virgin? A lady should never be caught cursing. <laughs> she was begging for it, gagging. Shame now they're sagging. I go on, love, give us a kiss. Who does she think she is? Can you give us a smile? Like, I just say hello when she runs a mile. I bet she's a demon in the sheets. So what does she expect wearing that in the streets? I pay her a compliment to know she's cross. I could make things very difficult for you. I'm your boss. Whoa, here comes a third wave feminist. <laughs> nah, she wouldn't make my top five list. Cock tease. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise this is everyday conversation that you instigated was so erotic. Um, my first especially bad experience, I guess, that has stuck with me was um, we were at a party with a bunch of other kids and a 12-year-old decided to take me when I was about six to the bathroom and tried to get me to take my clothes off. And when I told people about that, especially any adult that was nearby, I was basically they kind of just laughed and said boys will be boys or whatever. Myself and my boyfriend went into a computer repair shop and we dropped off a hard drive to be fixed and the guy behind the counter looked directly at me and said I'm looking forward to finding all your hot, your hot topless pictures on the hard drive. Another time I was in Heathrow airport in a shop just looking around wasting time between a flight and this guy who worked in the shop proceeded to follow me around the shop whispering bitch bitch until I left. Being kissed untouched without your consent feels like you've been dealt a blow. You feel shocked, humiliated and violated. It's never okay. And um, then he got to me and I said I wanted to be a cinematographer and it's kind of like his eyes kind of rolled back in his head and he was like, oh, another cinematographer. I've personally never seen a woman be a cinematographer, let alone a camera woman. You know, I've, I've only ever worked with female producers, you'd be better off getting into producing. And uh, it's, it's really strange to see in college, you know, someone who's supposed to kind of lift you up and inspire you as a teacher to kind of belittle you and put you down just based upon your gender. I played hurling and football and my team got into the final in both hurling and football. The lads also uh, got into the final hurling and football. We didn't have a full set of jerseys. Uh, for getting into the final, the boys were given a full new set and gear bags, all the gear to keep for themselves. We were allowed to take their cast-offs. Still didn't have, end up with a full set. So we would end up having different players wearing different jerseys. Then my boss stood up and was like, um, it's actually crazy thinking about it that he turned to a group of young girls and said this, but he was like, it's a scientific fact that um, women's voices just sound like, like an engine, was it like just an engine noise to men's ears and that um, their voices can actually just be like drowned out after a certain amount of time, you actually don't even hear what they're saying, it's to do with the frequency of their voice that like they actually just can't be heard. It's a scientific fact, it's a scientific fact. Like, can you even hear me right now? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Is it just engine noise? And we all just stood there, just... <laughs> so anyway, I was just collecting a plate, and I looked up, and suddenly he was really very close to me, like, you know, he was at the barn, and suddenly he was just making, it like, a feline for me, and I was just like, okay. And again, I just looked, I averted my gaze, and when I looked up, he was literally right in front of me, and he reached out and grabbed my breast. And so, yeah, he didn't say anything to me, he just literally walked up to me, grabbed me and walked off. And I was in a group of people, it's kind of one of these pubs where, you know, lots of people talk, you know, you're not in a group together, but everyone's just talking. And out of the blue, this guy, who would be about my dad's age, he's a doctor, picked me up, sat me on his lap really fast again. I was a bit older this time, so I turned around to him, I said, don't ever do that again, it makes me feel really uncomfortable. And his answer was, don't be ridiculous. It's, it's a funny thing um, to kind of consider the poem and, and the kind of the, the message that's being put across. 
Um, just even in my journey over here, I had a, an ex well, I didn't have an exchange with a, a, a man. The man just kind of shouted across like, hey, Miss Nigeria, and I kind of looked at him blankly and continued walking on, and he kind of maybe realized the, um, the fact that it wasn't a coerced conversation, that he made a presumption that was probably incorrect, that I suppose it would seem a bit obnoxious or presumptuous to shout out anything to anyone that you don't exactly know and have engaged the situation to see as to whether it's welcomed or not. Um, and I just think that's kind of one of the biggest issues and, and the fact that we don't really have a call-out culture. Like, we're always expected to, I suppose, we're always just expected for, it's always the victim's responsibility. It's always that we have to do everything. We have to be the ones who don't talk to this person. We have to be the person who fights or, or you know, stands up for ourselves and no one else will ever give us that support. And I think that's something that's really horrible. Like, I had a male friend recently say to me, why do women always go to the bathroom together? Like, it's, you know... And I kind of went, oh, you know, we, we would like to have the chat and gossip about you in the bathroom, but it's actually because you're told, you know, stick to your buddy when you're out. Like, my friend, we will automatically go, oh, I'm going to head to the bathroom, oh, I'll go with you. Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's automatic now. It does, it's not even something we think about. Or listening to music. I listen to music, and I know a lot of my friends listen to music because, I mean, if we get shouted at, we're not going to hear it on the street. So it makes going about your day more pleasant. I mean, it's nice to listen to music, but it's also nice not to hear someone shouting at you. <laughs> and it's a good way to drown it out. Uh, what I thought he was following us, and then I was like, Geneve, oh my God, he's got something in his hand. Like, I could see that he was just doing something, and I was like, straight away I thought, oh, he had a knife, he's gonna like rob us or something. And then, then he crossed over to the road, or to our side of the road, and was like facing us, and uh, he didn't have a knife, he was just wanking, and I, was like, oh my God, like, it was just so surreal. I was like, wait, like this is what happened. I, I didn't know what to do. And he just stood there and he had this like smirk on his face. Um, and he just kept saying, like, look at me like dead in the eyes. He was like, I'm going to fuck you. Like, I don't know how many times he said that. He just kept repeating it. One guy came up and slapped my ass. And then when I turned around to give out to them, um, they spat the words, fuck you, in my face and put their middle finger, shoved their middle finger in my face and walked out. Um, and I guess, yeah, the more everyday things is just the continual um, being groped and grabbed and slapped um, every night out. And it's kind of, um, it, it might not be all men, but it does tend to be all women. I would hate to think that my sons would be anything but respectful to anybody of any sex. We don't really have people um, standing by now when there's homophobic, homophobic slurs or racist slurs, people stand up to those things these days. And that's because people uh, rallied behind that. People started to stand up and say, no, that this isn't okay. And made it more normal, made it safer for everybody to, to tap into that, to that feeling that actually I don't like when my friends do that or I don't like being part of this crowd who does that. And next time that happens to me, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say no and I'm going to have a voice.